You need to be 18 to drive in Belgium. So if you're 17 and you want to make a trip here, I'm afraid you're going to have to wait until your birthday. Make sure you take proof of insurance. If you've got car insurance in the UK, it should include some cover for Europe, but check with your insurer to make sure. You don't need a green card anymore. A green card is an internationally recognized proof of insurance. If you want a green card, you can call your insurer and they should send you one, usually for an admin fee. Make sure you have your fee five registration document, which is your logbook and proof of MOT. Also, don't forget your passports. When driving in Belgium, you need some high visibility jackets. You must keep them in the car because you must be able to put them on before you get out of the car if you break down, one for each passenger. Also, you need a warning triangle. This doesn't look like a warning triangle, but you take it out, you unfold it, and you put it behind the car to warn people if you break down. You do have to have both of these. The GB sticker is no longer acceptable. You need a UK sticker, or it needs to say UK on your number plate with the Union Jack. If it says GB on the number plate with the Union Jack, that's not acceptable. And neither is GB with the European Union flag, the stars in a circle. You can't have that either if you're from the UK. Also, you'll need to put some stickers on your headlights. Your headlights are set up for driving on the left side of the road, and in Belgium, you're driving on the right. Unless your car has a flat beam like this car, so I don't actually need the stickers on this one. If you're planning to hire a car in Belgium and you're under 21 years old, you may find it difficult, as you will in most places. If you're carrying children and they're under 18 and under 135 centimetres tall, then you'll need some kind of child restraint, a child seat or a booster seat. It depends on their size and weight. And if you're taking a taxi ride, children must sit in the back. The drink drive limit in Belgium is lower than that in the UK. It's just 0.05. In the UK, it's 0.08. However, it's best not to drink anything if you're driving because even one glass of wine can put you over the limit and fines are harsh, not to mention the fact that you're less capable at driving. Mobile phones are banned. You're not allowed to use a mobile phone, but you can if you have a hands-free kit. Speed camera detection devices are banned in Belgium. However, if you have a sat nav and it's highlighting where the speed cameras are, that's okay. According to the .gov website in the UK, in Belgium there were 5.6 deaths per 100,000 people in the population in 2019. And in the UK, there was 2.6 deaths per 100,000 people in the population during the same year. So that means during 2019 at least, you were twice as likely to die on the road in Belgium than you were in the UK. So be careful and maybe take a good luck charm. There are three main languages in Belgium, Dutch being the most popular, and then there's French and German. So the road signs here can be a little bit confusing because they seem to be in different languages. However, the road signs, the symbol signs seem fairly similar, like triangles for warning, circles for what you shouldn't do, red circles for what you shouldn't do, and blue signs for what you should do. Be careful of temporary traffic lights in Belgium because they're tiny, you don't have many warning signs, and they're just a little stick, easy to miss. Whereas in the UK, you've got lots of triangles letting you know that there's roadworks and some temporary traffic lights. Not here, I nearly missed them. In Belgium, you should give way to the right, even if the car on your right is giving way to pedestrians or cyclists crossing the road. Exceptions to this is if you're on a motorway, a roundabout, or if you have an orange diamond sign with a white border. In Belgium, motorways are either really good or really bad. And I'm talking about the road surface. It's either smooth or there are holes everywhere. However, there are a lot of street lamps. In fact, all of the motorways I've been on so far seem to be fully street lit. No cat size though, but as they're street lamps, you don't really need the cat size. Trams have priority over cars, regardless if they're coming from the left or the right. And if a tram stops in the middle of the road to let passengers in and out, then cars must wait behind. If a pedestrian is waiting to cross a road at a junction, cars should wait and give way. In some parts of the world that drive on the right-hand side of the road, if you want to turn right at traffic lights, 
You can when it's red, but in Belgium you can't. But in some places, cyclists can. So, watch out, be careful. Like many European countries, some cities have low emission zones. In Belgium, there are low emission zones in Brussels, Ghent and Antwerp. So make sure you check it out before you go. In Belgium, speed limits are done in kilometers per hour. Near schools, it's 30 kilometers per hour. In town, it's 50. Outside of town, it's 90. And on dual carriageways and motorways, it's 120. This is for cars. And there's a minimum speed limit on motorways of 70 kilometers per hour. The emergency services number in Belgium is 112. And if you want to get petrol or diesel, petrol is normally labeled E10 or E5, as it is in the UK, and diesel is labeled diesel. So it's quite straightforward. However, I was at a petrol station yesterday on a motorway and I couldn't get petrol. I was squeezing the pump and nothing was happening. And I was looking on the machine, trying to find where I could put my card in to pay, and I couldn't find anything. So I thought, well, this isn't pay at pump. So what's going on here? It's not pay at pump, but it's not working. I went in and asked, and he said, you've got to pay at the machine. And I was like, what machine? But Gosha, she found the machine. There was one machine for loads of pumps. So you've got to find the machine, the payment machine, put the number of the pump you're at, then walk back to your pump to fill up. There are currently no tolls on Belgian roads for cars under three and a half tons, 3,500 kilograms, which essentially means all cars, because when you're over 3,500 kilograms, it's no longer a car. Even though there's no cat size in Belgium, when you go over one of the white lines on a motorway, it makes a noise. So I'm gonna change lane now, and as I cross the line, it makes a noise. Don't know if you can hear that, it kind of goes whoop, 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 whoop. So you'll know if you're straying out of your lane audibly, but it's well lit, so there's no reason not to see your lane. To park in most urban areas in Belgium, you have to pay. You have to pay with a parking meter or go to a car park, but there are some blue zones. If there's a blue zone, you can go to a garage or a news agent and pay for a blue parking disc, and that allows you to park in the blue zone for free for a set number of hours. Even though I said that the road surface quality in Belgium is either really good or really bad on the motorways, most of it is very good. I think the first bit of motorway I drove on was particularly bad and that worried me that that was what was to come and I had a long way to go, but very smooth and lane discipline is better than that in the UK. A tip for driving on the wrong side of the road. What you want to do is remember if you're sitting next to the curb or next to the middle of the road and then stick to that. So I'm in a right hand drive car because this car is from the UK. That means I'm next to the curb. So if I get to a junction and I get confused, I just think, well, I need to be next to the curb. So when I come out of that junction, I'll put myself next to the curb, then I'm on the correct side of the road. If you're hiring the car, obviously the steering wheel will be on the side of the road that's appropriate for that country. So then you'll likely be next to the middle of the road. If you're driving on a motorway or a dual carriageway in Belgium and you see a speed limit sign with an arrow pointing down and to the right, that's the speed limit for the exit road. Don't worry, you don't have to do that low speed limit on the main road. Some of the roads in Belgium are very noisy. I was on a noisy stretch and I thought, well, hopefully this doesn't last long, but it's been going on for about half an hour. It's like I'm driving on sandpaper. Something I wanna talk about when it comes to the speed limit, and that's how long it takes you to cover distance. Because the speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour, and distance is measured in kilometers in Belgium, you do about two kilometers per minute. So although the numbers on the sat-nav may look big and scary, like at the moment the next junction is 102 kilometers away, well, they go down by two a minute, a lot quicker than you're used to in the UK, where the numbers drop much more slowly. There doesn't seem to be many services in Belgium. We went past one, I think, over an hour ago. We thought we'd get the next one, but we're only just coming up to one. And it said the one after this is 99 kilometers away. So yeah, I'm not gonna miss the services. I need servicing and food.
If you like the video, give it a like. Check out confuse.com in the description if you're looking for insurance, particularly if you're coming to Europe and want some European insurance. If your insurance doesn't give you what you want, check them out to see if they can. Subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.